Hey, what's up, DIYers? Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking outdrive engines and we're talking about that little gimbal bearing inside and we're going to talk about the purpose of it. Let's get started. DIYers, here we are at the Craftsman Workstation and on the left-hand side, you can see resting on a stand is our outdrive. Both the upper and lower are completely rebuilt. However, again, in this video, we're going to talk about the purpose of a gimbal bearing. Let's get started. To a closer look, again, completely rebuilt. Even got brand new stickers on this thing. Check that out. Pretty neat. We have an Alpha 1 Gen 1 off an 89 glass port, inboard outboard 3.0 Mercruiser. And as far as our gimbal bearing, here is the part number Quicksilver OEM. Let's go and open it. Here it is out of the box and let's continue removing it from the packaging. All right, DIYers, here it is out of the package. And this is our big alignment tool. I'm going to set that aside. And again, the gimbal bearing, check that out. Now this is a sealed bearing. And our original gimbal bearing from 1989 that was inside the bell housing and deep within the outdrive where it feeds into the hull and into the inboard. Ours was a grease bearing. And what we had to do, basically, this little split in the outer race or carrier was a grease hole. And we had to ensure that we aligned the gimbal bearing properly when we reinstalled a brand new one to ensure that the grease hole on the gimbal bearing was perfectly in line with the grease hole on the bell housing, which in return allowed us to connect a grease gun to the fitting on the bell housing and feed grease into the fitting and through the lines where it would go into the gimbal bearing properly greasing the gimbal bearing however as the years went on the manufacturers transitioned to a sealed bearing as shown here you no longer have a grease hole it is factory sealed which is definitely an improved design and a cleaner and more reliable design and looking at the face of the carrier on this portion of the gimbal bearing you see a perfectly round inner hole here and then you've got the inner seal where the grease is and you get this little yellow dot and DIYers, on that note, this is the Mercury Mercruiser Service Bulletin. And the bulletin number is 2009-13 with an OEM number 2009-08. And as you can see right here, this went out to all service managers as well as technicians and all part managers. And this is the exact service bulletin that explains the transition from the original or older style gimbal bearing that's greasable to the new permanently lubricated and sealed gimbal bearing that we're showing you in this video. And the situation, as shown here, we'll cover that as well as ordering parts. I'll come back up here. Here are the models covered, and you want to reference your exact outdrive name as well as the serial number range, these numbers and above for your exact transoms. And I'll come all the way down here. There's the grease fitting that, believe it or not, you will remove when you install a brand new gimbal bearing. You will install a brand new set screw that has a tamper resistant or securing design to it. However, I'm going to come all the way down here, and here is our specific serial number, newly designed permalube and sealed gimbal bearing. As I just showed you, the yellow dot. DIYers, it is extremely important to reference your exact serial number service manual for your exact outdrive to ensure that you are installing the proper replacement and compatible newly designed gimbal bearing, as well as positioning the newly designed gimbal bearing into your transom. And as you can see with ours, we have a yellow dot in the letter A and B as shown here. Letter A references the center race is the same on both sides as you see here. Same on both sides. And the letter B is the yellow dot for, again, the newly designed permanently lubricated or permalube for short gimbal bearing. And you'll notice there is no grease hole right here. And I'll come up here. Here is our original gimbal bearing. There's the grease hole. And you'll notice it does not have a yellow dot. The plain dot is the greasable gimbal bearing. We are not going to install a greasable gimbal bearing. Again, we are transitioning to the newly designed and sealed gimbal bearing with no grease hole right here and extremely extremely important take a very good look at that picture right there and where the yellow dot is it is exactly positioned at the 10 o'clock position and that is very important i'm going to come back up here perma lube gimbal bearings important when installing the gimbal bearing the identifying dot on the gimbal bearing should be positioned at 10 o'clock as viewed from the stern again Right here, our exact serial number outdrive service manual requires us to purchase the gimbal bearing with the yellow dot, and when we install it, it must be positioned at the exact 10 o'clock position. Because long story short, if it's not, I can promise you this, as well as the engineers can promise you this, your brand new gimbal bearing that is the Permaloop gimbal bearing design will not perform as it's designed to do. Unfortunately, it will also experience premature failure. In DIYers, you don't want that, right? So again, 10 o'clock position, I wanted to show you that. And there's a lot more to this service bulletin, as well as newly designed gimbal bearings with green dots, white dots, 
red dots, and this all references Alpha 1s, Alpha 1 Gen 2s, Bravos, and more. And I know I ran through this pretty quickly because this isn't really the sole purpose of this video. However, we have a video link scrolling above right now, as well as down below in the comment section and description section that covers this exact service bulletin in more detail. So please definitely check that out. You will find that very helpful. However, let's go back to the workstation and pick up right where we left off. In addition, on the outer portion, you have this carrier sleeve there. And then when you flip to the back side of the gimbal bearing, you see two little slots here. Now, when it comes time to install this new gimbal bearing into the boat, you will want to ensure that these slots are positioned away from you and sliding inward toward the hull of the boat. In other words, when you install this gimbal bearing in the boat and you pull the install tool out and take a look inside the boat where you're standing and looking inside the boat, this is what you will see. So it's very important to know the difference between the two or the shape of the gimbal bearing when you install it. And I'll set this back on the bench. From here, DIYers, I basically want to go into the fundamentals or purpose of the gimbal bearing itself. And really, a 101 explanation of it, the gimbal bearing is specifically designed to support the movement of the yoke shaft, which is connected to the upper unit of the outdrive. And then you slide that through the bell housing inside the rear portion of the boat, where it then feeds through the hull of the boat and into the engine coupler of your inboard engine. And in return, it lessens the movement load of the outdrive itself. Now, in addition or on top of that, the rotational torque load of engine power distributed through the outdrive all the way to the propeller, meaning everything inside your outdrive, spinning, drive shafts, bearings, etc. This gimbal bearing helps weaken the load on all of those parts to alleviate failure. Engineering at its finest, really. These little gimbal bearings serve an extremely important role in the alignment of power, again being distributed from the inboard engine all the way downstream to your outdrive and all the way to your propeller. So really that's kind of the 101 explanation of it. I want to put it in use, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to secure this gimbal bearing to our vise, grab the alignment tool, and I want to show you what the inner portion of this gimbal bearing is really designed to do so you have a much better understanding of it. However, first back to the outdrive, here is our yoke shaft and U-joints feeding into the upper unit and... I've got that gimbal bearing. Again, those slots will go closest to the engine, so really it would be installed like this. And it goes over the splines, up the shaft, and mates with this portion of the shaft. And when everything's put back together, you obviously will not see the gimbal bearing in action when the engine is running. However, that's why we're here. We're going to show you what it looks like. Let's put this in the vise. Here it is, the LRs. The gimbal bearing is safely secured into my vise, and I grab the large, heavy alignment tool that we will use to install this gimbal bearing back into the boat. However, now that the gimbal bearing is secured to the vise, I can really show you how this inner portion of the bearing works. And I'm going to carefully slide the alignment tool through the gimbal bearing, as shown here. And now that we have the alignment tool through the inner portion of the gimbal bearing, we're now going to demonstrate the movement, again, of the inner bearing by pretending that this alignment tool is our long yoke shaft that extends out of our U-joints that, again, we just saw in the upper unit. So with that said, as the engine is running and the engine is in gear, the drive shaft is spinning at a very rapid rotation speed. And as you make adjustments with the engine trim-wise, whether you're trimming it up or down, you are moving the entire outdrive. And as it moves, for example, check this out. You'll notice that the gimbal bearing is still spinning, but the internal portion of the bearing is at a different angle. Now we will trim it, for example, a different way, as you see here. In addition, we can turn it every which way as this drive shaft is spinning. Check that out. So that is the whole engineering and design around these awesome little gimbal bearings. A little tough to move, but that's okay, I just wanted to show you this little thing in action. Check that out. And again, the new designs having the internal portion of the bearing sealed with grease alleviates a preventative maintenance item by not having us have to grease this bearing. Again, it's all sealed, it's all done for us. So I'll give you a quick little movement view of it again. Pretty neat. I'll realign that, carefully pull the alignment tool out. And I'll set that aside. At this point, DIYers, I have removed the gimbal bearing from the vise. And real quick, scrolling above right now is a link to a video that shows us installing this vise on a workbench. We love it. Definitely check that out. However, to the outdrive again, using that alignment tool as if it was our yoke shaft that is installed to our U-joint assembly and upper unit or outdrive, hopefully gives you a better understanding of the purpose of a gimbal bearing and what it looks like when it's in use. To the back of the boat where the transom is, let's go inside the gimbal bearing housing where the gimbal bearing will be installed as well as the grease seal. As you can see, we've cleaned it up pretty good.
Now to a close up of the inner housing and bearing. As you can see, it's a little sweaty because it was frozen. And this portion right here, this inner bore, must be 1 8 inch available or showing after you install this gimbal bearing flush with the back stopping point in there. Not this housing, not the next step up, but the third step up where I've got those grooves that the previous gimbal bearing made as it came out. So again, 1 8 inch must be accessible. So if you do not have 1 8 inch accessible, you are not flush with the back stopping point and your gimbal bearing must continue to be driven in and flush until it meets that back stopping point. And DIYers, there it is. The yellow dot is positioned exactly at the 10 o'clock position as the engineers have mandated. From here, we hope the video helped. Hey, do us a favor. Below the video, you will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We would really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.